Okay. Chris will moderate. Coach Liddell Betts, can you hear me okay? I can. All right, I can hear you as well. It's great to see you this afternoon. I will uh, give you a chance to make some opening statements and then we will throw it out the questions for the group. So the floor is yours. All right, thank you for the intro. As was previously stated, my name is Liddell Betts, running backs coach here at the University of Iowa. Uh, new addition to the staff, probably not new to many of you. Familiar face, familiar name, but uh, just a little bit older and a little less hair on top of my head these days. But uh, it feels good to be back. It's been kind of surreal, uh, somewhat nostalgic at times and every emotion in between. But for me, this was a unique opportunity that I couldn't pass up on, you know, an opportunity to uh, come back to the university from which I started uh, to do something that I love, which is coaching football, and obviously to coach a position that I know pretty well, which is running back. You know, when I first started playing football, I was 11 years old and didn't stop playing football until I was 31. So over the course of 20 years, I played nothing but running back. And uh, post-career, went on to start coaching and coach running backs for the last nine to 10 years. So as fate would have it in 30 years of experience, it's led me back to the University of Iowa. And uh, for me, I've been able to inherit a great group of guys, a uh, talented group from top to bottom, uh, high character individuals. And that's a testament to uh, the type of kids that this university recruits, but it's also a testament to Coach Foster, who I didn't have the pleasure of meeting, but um, it's clear that he definitely established a foundation in that room. And, you know, as we go through spring, there's obviously various levels of, of uh, experience in the room. We have two guys with a lot of experience and the rest of the guys don't have much experience on Saturdays at all. So I'll start off with the, the older guys. I'll start off with Kelly, Ivory Kelly Martin, kind of the elder statesman of the group, if you will. Haven't had an opportunity to work with him on the field yet, um, but he's been great in the meeting rooms, uh, been available at practice, helping out with the younger guys. And then you've got Tyler Goodson, who I'm sure everyone knows, uh, all Big Ten performer, tremendously talented young man, uh, and, and with the work ethic to match. So you love that about him. Um, then after that, the experience level drops off a bit. You know, we have some of the young guys and Gavin Williams and LeSean Williams. And for them, spring is huge right now. They're getting an opportunity to really uh, not only learn the nuances of the offense, but really hone in on the fundamentals of the position as well. And then we have a, a little bit of a late addition in Nolan Donald. Uh, Nolan started off as a receiver coming into spring, but then moved over to running back. There's a little bit more opportunity there for him and uh, provide some depth. So all in all, those guys have been doing everything that I've asked. They've accepted the challenge. And that challenge for me is to operate with a championship level attitude. And that means weight room, uh, meeting room, and on the practice field. And so far, they're uh, fulfilling their end of the obligation. So uh, I'm pleased with them. I'm excited about this whole opportunity. And with that being said, I'll turn it over to you guys. I thank you for being here. And if you have any questions, fire away. All right, coach, thanks for that. We will get started. And as we do, I will ask everyone out there to please state your name and uh, affiliation. Uh, the first one, first question this afternoon, coach, is from Pat. Yeah, hi, Liddell. This is Pat Hardy with Hawk Fanatic. And first of all, welcome back to Iowa City after all these years. And I want to ask you, you were there at the beginning under Kirk. You helped lay the foundation during the tough times. How can that help you in this new role, or can it help you? Well, it can, because like anyone knows, we, we never know what the future holds. You never know wins and losses will take care of themselves. But at some point, we're all going to, uh, you know, run into adversity. And so for me, having been through here, been through the tough times and having been through adversity, I can speak firsthand about how to get through that. And so if that time or should I say when that time comes, if and when that time comes, uh, I, I kind of know best how to handle that with our players. But our guys, uh, you know. We're recruiting high character individuals. They, they know how to compete and they know how to overcome adversity. Coach, the next question is from Scott. Yeah, hi, Coach Betts. I'm Scott Docterman with The Athletic. I hope you're doing well today. Yeah. I wanted to ask you kind of about your NFL career and how it kind of applies to your coaching philosophy. You were in uh, Washington, uh, played alongside Clinton Portis a terrific running back. You had a long career. What can you take away from your experiences in the NFL and how can you apply that to teaching and coaching uh, today, tomorrow, and moving forward? Well, I think one of the misconceptions, uh, just my personal opinion about running back is that a lot of people think that we just run the ball. We just turn around and hand the ball off to running back and watch him go. But there's a lot of nuances to the position. And uh, being in the NFL, you get to learn a lot of those nuances, uh, whether it be obviously running the football, which everyone expects of us, but, you know, how to run routes, how to, how to catch the ball, how to, uh, how to block, 
you know, all those little techniques that really separate just your average tailback to taking your game to the next level. Because the truth is there's running backs all over the country that know how to run, but can you do the other things? And so for me, that's something that I bring uh, from my NFL experience to the, to the meeting rooms now. The next question, Coach, is from Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, Liddell. Uh, welcome back to Iowa City. Tom Kakert with Hawkeye Report and Rivals.com. Um, question for you is about um, how has the Iowa run game changed from when you were running in it? Uh, and is it easier to teach it because you've done it? Great question. Uh, the truth of that question is it actually hasn't changed much. And that was one of the first things that – that Brian told me when I got here, he said, you're going to, I'm not worried about you learning the offense because you're going to remember most of it once you start uh, hearing it. And it's true. And honestly, there's, there's not a lot of different ways to run the football. You have zone schemes, you have gap schemes, and you have lead schemes. And we do all three. And everything that they're doing now is the same stuff that we were doing back when I was here. Uh, it's outside zone, inside zone, a uh, few lead concepts and some gap concepts. So football, uh, it's, it's changed, but at the end of the day, running game is a running game. Coach Betts, we'll take the next question from Leah. Hi, Coach. I'm Leah Van from the Cedar Rapids Gazette. Uh, it's nice Hello, to meet you. Uh, nice to meet yeah, you. I was curious, you know, you coached a lot of high school football, it looks like, and then all of a sudden you're at a Division I program, and obviously where you played before, but I'm just wondering how you make that jump coaching-wise and what learning curves you might anticipate in this role, because – a lot of guys kind of have to take a couple more steps than you do between coaching high school and division one. That's a great question. Um, it, it is a little bit different, but at the end of the day, coaching football, when I'm on the field, it, it's, it feels like home to me. It's what comes natural to me because at the end of the day, it's football and football doesn't change at, you know, it's hitting, tackling, running, catching, uh, passing the football. It doesn't change no matter what level you're at, just a little more detailed at this level. Um, I think the biggest, um, change for me or the biggest learning curve will be the recruiting process. Obviously there's a lot of compliance things that I have to learn and, and just going about that, which is something that on, from this side, I haven't been used to. I'm not, I haven't been privy to as of, as of yet, but uh, as far as coaching, it, it's football at the end of the day. And I feel pretty comfortable in the role, especially coaching running backs. If I was asked to do something else, it might be a bigger learning curve for me. Coach, the next question is from Mike Colossus. Hello, <clears throat> excuse me. Hello, Liddell. Michael Oss from the Gazette in Cedar Rapids. Hey, Mike. How are you? Good. Uh, what, what's struck you? What's changed down there just from when you left 20 years ago to when you have arrived back to go to work? Just what feels different? And then, and then maybe on the other side, what feels the same? Uh, the biggest difference is aesthetically. Uh, the city has changed a lot. Um, you know, I don't know how Iowa City purists feel about it, but it, it seems like a good change to me. You know, there's more hotels and, and things of that nature, condos, newer coffee shops, newer restaurants. So that's the first thing that stands out to me. And then you have this building that, that didn't even exist when I was here. So my, when I came here for my interview, this was the first time I ever set foot in this place. Uh, so that, that's a big change for me. But as far as football and, and um, the, the fundamentals and the leadership within the organization, that hasn't changed. I mean, Coach Ferentz has been around here for 22 years plus, and uh, he's done a great job. He wouldn't be here if he hadn't, <laughs> if he if he wasn't doing a great job. So not a lot has changed, but more more so aesthetically for me. The next question, Coach, is from Chad. Hey, Chad, how are you? Hey, Liddell, Chad Leistico, Des Moines Register. Took me a minute to unmute there. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, obviously, uh, in your bio, you have five daughters and one son. Uh, I was just curious kind of how that transition worked, uh, bringing everyone, I assume you brought everyone up here from Florida and you guys, uh, I guess, what were those discussions like as a family too? That's a, that's a big change for a lot of people. It is actually, my family's not even here yet. Um, some of my kids are still in school, so they haven't made the transition yet, but uh, it was, it was a, it was a very tough conversation and uh, we, we molded over many times because I wanted to make sure that they were on board with everything. And, and my wife was one of my big, who is my biggest supporter She's been on board since day one. She, she said, listen, you're crazy if you don't do this. So uh, once I had her blessing, you know, we're, we're in this together and the kids will adjust and they'll, and they'll figure it out. But 
they haven't made it up here yet, but they plan to make it up here. We've already been up here and uh, identified a house. So we plan to close and, and get in there hopefully pretty soon. Coach, the next question is from David. Hey, Liddell, welcome back to Iowa C. Uh, David Eichel, 24-7 Sports, Hawkeye Insider. It might be kind of a loaded question, but how would you describe your coaching philosophy using only three words, and why would you select those three words? Oh, that's an easy one. Alignment, assignment, effort. That's what I, that's what I preach to the guys every day. Alignment, assignment, effort. Uh, none of those three things require any athletic ability. If you know where to be, if you know how to do your job and what to do, and then last but not least, put forth the effort, I, I can coach you the rest. Coach, the next question is from Scott Doctrine of The Athletic. Yeah, I had a question about regarding uh, Tyler Goodson. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you got a chance to watch a lot of film from him last year and was one of the top running backs in the Big Ten and maybe one of the top 10 or 15 in the country. Uh, in what ways has he maybe made strides? And how do you hope to shape him and help him improve uh, through this spring, the summer, and the fall? Well, he's making strides. Um, first of all, this is this is a first spring for everyone in the room, except for Ivory Kelly Martin, who ironically can't participate in this spring. So, for all of them, this is this is a huge uh, huge experience for them to be able to work on their fundamentals uh, and understand the nuances of the offense. But when you talk about Tyler specifically, I'm a firm believer in iron sharpens iron. So, all these guys are out there competing. And as Gavin or LeSean or Nolan or when Ivory gets a chance to come back, as those guys get better, which they have day in and day out throughout this spring, they'll continue to push him and make him better and vice versa. As he gets better, he makes them better. So in that regard, I think, you know, iron sharpens iron. Those guys come out here and they come to work and they come to com and they come to compete. And the last thing I'll say about that is from the day one, when I stepped into that meeting room, I told the guys, listen, your job as a player is to make my job very difficult. And what I mean by that is I want you to perform at such a high level in practice that you make it hard for me not to play you. And when we have that type of attitude from everyone in the room, it, it, it will do nothing but push everyone. And that should, that should elevate Tyler's play as well. What's kind of his superlatives as a player? What do you see from him that makes him one of the better ones in the country? Tyler has vision. Uh, one, he has vision, and then when you have vision, he has the ability to put his put action to that vision. Not everyone can do that. Sometimes people can see the move or see the run, but their body doesn't can't make it happen. He has the ability to do both, and I think that's his greatest asset. He has the vision. He has the ability to make the uh, put that put that vision into action. Coach, for the next question, we'll circle back to Tom Caker of Hawkeye Report. Del, I wonder, um, you brought up recruiting a little bit. Do you have a territory that you're going to recruit? Are you going to be recruiting down in Florida, Kansas City, your old stomping grounds? Where are you going to be at? I'll be in Minnesota. So far, I've been given Minnesota and a little bit of Florida. I've been given Tampa area and Jacksonville as well. So um, I won't be in Kansas City, but I'll, I'll be here in the Midwest area in Minnesota, and then I get a chance to go down to uh, where it's been new home for me, which is down in Florida. The next question, Coach, from Chad Leistico of the Des Moines Register. Hey, me again. Uh, back to Tyler Goodson. Um, where can he get better? And, and I wonder, uh, you know, as someone who seems to us to have enormous potential, like what types of things do you see from your NFL experience that he needs to do to get to the next level? Well, I would say this for every running back, not just Tyler, but um, – and I've expressed this to Tyler in the entire running back room, which is, again – there's a there's a running backs all over the country that know how to run the football, right? So what what can you do to elevate your game or to start to separate yourself from everybody else that runs the ball? And that's going to come down to are you, can you catch the ball? Can you pass block? And so those for him are going to be a big emphasis for him. Is how well do you catch the ball? How well do you run routes out of the backfield? How how multidimensional can you be? And he understands that and he's working at all those things. Coach, the next question from Pat Hardy of Hawk fanatic. Yeah, Liddell, um, you signed with Iowa under Hayden Fry. You played your first season under Hayden Fry. How did, what kind of impact did he have on you as you came to college and started to grow? <laughs> well, I think one thing I've learned is uh, a lot of this business is about relationships, especially when you're talking about college football. And um, I'm, I'm sure everyone knows Coach Fry was very charismatic. Uh, 
it, you know, he made it easy for you wanted to come for you to want to come play for him. You know, he'd have jokes for you. Uh, so he was definitely a relationship guy. Uh, he would light up a room when he walked in. So that's one of the things I remember about Coach Fry. And one of the things I take with me, it's, it's a relationship business and you got to get to know your players and be able to uh, connect with your players. The next question, Coach, from Scott Docterman of The Athletic. You know, last summer was a challenging period for this program in a lot of different ways. Um, I want to know what you thought from afar when you maybe saw that developing, how connected you were during the, the summer, and then what have, what's been your thoughts, your recollections, and your observations since you returned to Iowa, you know, for the first time in, in several years? Right. Well, it's a bit unfair of me to speculate about things that happened or transpired while I wasn't here. But, um, you know, I, I'll say this. I definitely had an invested, invested interest in what was, what was being said, what was being talked about. And um, I'll assure you this. I would not be standing here before you if I didn't believe in the direction of this program. And I wouldn't be standing here before you if I didn't believe in Coach Ferentz's leadership of the program. So I can assure you that. Coach, the next question from Leah Van of the Cedar Rapids Gazette. Um, I know you've spent a lifetime in football, but I also wanted to know why you got into coaching just kind of off the resume. I actually kind of fell into it, to be honest with you. When I, when I left the game, I started uh, helping out with NFL camps. It was an NFL-sponsored camp. A buddy of mine was doing it, and he asked me to help out, so I did it. Uh, worked, with, worked alongside Troy Vincent for a little bit and fell in love with it. I just realized that it was one of the things things uh, actually post football that kind of still made me light up a little bit, still gave me chills, you know, still gave me an opportunity to be around the game and, and work with young men and help mold and build character in young men. So after that, I just stuck with it. I never stopped coaching. It's what I enjoy doing. Coach, the next question from Scott Docterman. In looking at, at a couple of the, the backups or uh, second teamers, you, you have, you know, obviously uh, Ivory can't, compete until what probably August at the earliest mm -hmm. uh, but what about the about Gavin and, and LaShawn Williams how are they fitting in and would you feel comfortable putting them in whether it's a, a competitive situation or even if uh, they were if they needed to be in in an important situation uh, coming up in the fall I would I, I definitely would feel comfortable putting those guys in uh, they've earned my trust over these last what four weeks um they're different runners, different styles. You know, Gavin's probably the bigger uh, bigger body in the room. Um, I think more of a rhythm runner, meaning the more carries he gets, I think the more effective uh, he'll be. Uh, he's very smart, takes his, takes his job very seriously in terms of trying to understand what his assignments are and what to do. And then LeSean, LeSean's kind of the life of the room. I, uh, you know, he, he makes me laugh every day. He's, he's, he's a funny kid, but um, he runs, he runs hard, runs behind his pads, and he's He's deceptively quick. Um, I, didn't, I didn't realize how good his feet were until I got here. So those guys are continuously every day making an impression on me. And again, like I told them the first day, I want them to make my job as hard as possible. I want you to perform so well day in and day out that you make it hard for me to keep you off the field. Don't make my job easy where I, where I have to look at you and say, okay, he's not ready. Make my job hard. And, they, and they're doing that. Thank you very much. All right, Coach Liddell Betts, I think that's it. So we want to thank you for your time this afternoon and welcome you back to Iowa City. Good luck moving forward. Thank you. Hopefully we all get to see each other face-to-face -face soon, right? That'd be wonderful. That'd be wonderful. <laughs>